this meat market where cattle are herded around by people who don't really care and just want to do lines of coke and shout at each other. Hello and welcome to Noisy Talks. Today you'll see that we are not in our usual venue of uh, the Old Blue Last in London, but here in Brighton for the Great Escape Festival. We have three variations of Indie Luminary. On my right, we have Peter Jarrett, who I'm sure you all recognize from his blog and message board website. Online you know platform. Uh, <laughs> record of the day, an ironic name because it deals solely in MP3s and uh, A&R chitter chatter, which is something no, um, you don't. You honestly, you don't have a clue what I do. I don't have. A, I don't have a clue what you do. <laughs> but I'm ex really excited to talk. Someone who I do have a clue what they do. Jen Wong. She's on the radio. She occasionally has a show on Radio Wales. Is that what it's called? It's just Radio One. Radio it's One right. in <laughs> Wales. And she also has runs one of the premier Welsh cassette-only labels. Again, top ten. Um, <laughs> speaking of top ten. We have oh, one of my top nice. four members of the Claxons Thank you very much, yeah. I'll it take is, any of those positions. Uh, Mr. Please. Jamie Reynolds of um, former hit group Claxons. Spot and on. Thank you very much. Future hit group. <laughs> future hit group, which is going to be relevant. See, everyone gets a, a ribbing. <laughs> yeah. We should speak honestly. So today, yeah, the first thing we're going to be talking about is hype as a concept and the A&R and media machine that comes to places like The Great Escape to harvest new bands and turn them into the sort of flavor of the moment. But there's the, the bigger question over that is, can that lead to sort of a glut of these short spanning careers? Jen, you play a key part in breaking new bands and you also contribute to a voting in the uh, BBC sound poll that comes out every year, talking about what bands are gonna be potentially big. I don't really like it that much because it seems it is, it's a bit strange to think that you can decide what band is going to be big by December when you vote for it in like November. It's kind of everything seems to move so quickly right now. But with the media building up bands only to take them down, you look at a band like Viva Brother who at the beginning of last year were on the cover of NME and Jen Long was calling them the thinking man's they oasis. They were my favourite um, favorite And then band. by the end of the year, they were sadly breaking up their album despite being uh, a mainstay of my three disc CD changer hi-fi. Simply hadn't connected in the way that people thought it might. How about you? Because you were in the sound of 2012. What about Jamie, who's in the sound of 2006? I was, yeah, some time oh, wow. ago. Thank you very much. How did you guys like feel when that, that came the out? Jamie, yeah, you've been How someone How I feel who's, about it? Yeah. My thing was that, is that I asked for it. I came up with an idea for a product and I gave it to a, to a sort of market for people that wanted to buy it and give it to a market. We went to people and were like, if we're not going to be top ten, then I don't want to be doing this game. Like, I'm in the wrong game. I you want know. to be the soundtrack of the skins Thanks. generation. Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I yes. absolutely. There were some sort of unexpected gifts along the way. Yeah. It's weird. I think these sound polls and lists of bands, it's a bit like... Uh, trying to work out if like, you want to go out with someone solely by looking at photos of their Facebook. You might get convinced that this girl or guy or hermaphrodite is the, <laughs> absolutely the most beautiful person you've ever seen and you're just clicking through their holiday pictures. What you believe to be the idea of a person, but the reality is always different to the idea. Like They put us, our band in the sound poll and people had only heard two or three songs. People can't be getting excited about a reality. They're getting excited about an idea, which seems like an odd thing. Surely, to me, it would make sense to have the sound poll at the end of the year and say, well, we, these were the really good bands this year. I think the worry about it is, is kind of like, further down the line, will you still have artists hitting their third or fourth album that, you know, is the album that does well, because will they be given a chance to get there? Well, tell me, Jamie, as someone who's experienced uh, the making of really big albums and less big albums, do you, do you think it is a double-edged sword? Our second record, it was, it was sort of plagued with things that were spoken about before it came out. If it was just judged on the music side of things, then I think that it would have sort of been more successful. But we were sort of, sort of constantly in the press before it was made, so the music sort of seemed to come secondary. But you had like loads of press before your second album about the songs being returned. Well, absolutely, because I've got a big mouth and I sit around like talking about whatever it is that's going on to people that I shouldn't do, and that's sort of <laughs> what happens. But what was that like, like writing though, that, that album that you wanted to write and then being told, 
told, like, oh, you can't put those songs out, you can't have them on the record, it's not going to be good enough, it's not going to be big enough? Um, I mean, that simply wasn't the case of what happened. Our case was that, um, was that we went off and we'd stopped thinking about the sort of hype machine and how that would affect what we were doing. We were sort of so focused on that as, a, as, as where we were and that, that, that was it, that when it came to the next thing we were going to do, we just stopped thinking about it, we just didn't care about it, it didn't matter to us. I think the biggest difference at the moment is that bands should be signing to indies rather than majors, because a major can't make uh, an album without spending several hundred thousand pounds, including the marketing and all that sort of gear, and it's not going to sell several hundred thousand records, so it should be on an indie where you can sell 10, 20, 30,000 and that be okay. Then you'll be able to go in and do your second or third album, but as soon as a major label like hears something with some buzz and they offer, then I think managers and bands get really excited by that. I don't think that's... Well, people like money. Often. Yeah, yeah but that's, the, that's the, one of the problems at the moment, there's not a great deal of money in it, so true. you need to try and be sustainable. Make a massive that far ahead. ahead. <laughs> what we're talking about seems quite relevant to yourself. You know, you're in a group and, and on all of this seems to sort of reflect on where you're at at the moment. And what's your sort of perspective on, on that? Chris Cunningham once gave me advice about Googling oneself. He said, I used to Google myself incessantly and then I realised that subconsciously everything I was doing was being uh, affected and almost infected by me reading other people's ideas about what I do. And the second that you're doing that, you're, you're, you can no longer sort of express yourself truly and freely. Unfortunately, I'd, I'd never stop Googling myself. The worst is you play a gig and you want to search on Twitter so you can get right up to the minute what everyone thought in the room. And at first, you play a headline show and you think you're the big man because you see some 14-year-old girl saying they want to marry you or something. And you're like, sick, I've arrived. <laughs> like, smashing it, not... Smashing, <laughs> not, no, not on a sexual level, an industry buzz. In that's Kelly. off the record, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you urinate on some fans backstage while you're high fiving your bass player who you don't even know their name, or you know. Yeah. And then you play a show like we played last night, and and I was like, I don't want you know. Oh, there's lots of people here. They probably came to see Dry the River. We were only wanted to come and do our thing and then someone searches it and it's like Spectre, shittest band of the festival and you try and say, I don't care what people think but it does get to you, but what's nasty, yeah, thanks <laughs> and I'm blaming you and to a certain extent I didn't you. realise you were following me yeah, uh, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's funny is that it's not, just, it's not just the negatives that affect you, it's also the positives. So when people say, like, this band is brilliant, oh, I can't wait for their album, you think, oh, really, you shouldn't, like, I hope they don't actually believe that because they're only going to be let down. But I've been brought up with great role models like Jamie, who I've seen deal with this situation, get their teeth into it, rip it apart, and just surf the hype, surf the void. <laughs> so thanks to my guests, Jamie Reynolds, Claxons, Jen Long, Radio One, Peter Jarrett, Record of the Day. And uh, thanks to our charming audience. I would ask if anyone has any questions, but I'm sure you'd rather just leave the room and pretend this never happened. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. That was good. Was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>